Australia, 1932. Picture it, wide open spaces, scorching sun, and more sheep than you can shake a stick at. Sounds idyllic, right? Well, not quite. See, Australia had a problem, a big, flightless, feathered problem, emus. These weren't your ordinary birds, they were tall, tough, and had an unquenchable thirst for farmers' crops. Now, Australian farmers were a hardy bunch, used to battling droughts, floods, and the occasional grumpy kangaroo. But the emus, they were something else. These feathered fiends descended upon fields of wheat like gangs in a western, gobbling up everything in sight. Fences, a mere suggestion to an emu. Farmers were at their wits' end. Their livelihoods were disappearing faster than a cold beer on a hot day. Desperate times call for desperate measures, or so the Australian government thought. Their solution? Send in the army, of course. Because what could be more logical than using machine guns on birds? Two Lewis machine guns, a squad of soldiers, and a whole lot of confidence. That was the plan. They called it the Emu War. Looking back, perhaps a less intimidating name might have been in order. Section 4. Shots fired. Feathers fly. Emus don't die. The stage was set for an unusual battle. Soldiers waited with bated breath, their fingers poised on the triggers, ready for the onslaught. And then, the emus charged. Or rather, they sort of wandered haphazardly towards the soldiers. Pecking at the ground, completely unfazed by the whole military operation thing, shots rang out, feathers flew. The soldiers fired relentlessly. Emus, well, emus just kept on being emus. They seemed almost indifferent to the chaos around them. They were fast, erratic, and surprisingly hard to hit. Their unpredictable movements made them elusive targets. It turns out that using machine guns on birds that can run like the wind wasn't the most effective strategy. The emus, with their speed and agility, outmaneuvered the soldiers at every turn. Section 5. Tactical Retreat. The emus outmaneuver the machine guns. The emus, Seemingly amused by the whole affair, decided to take matters into their own hands, or rather, their strong, clawed feet. They were not just running, they were orchestrating a masterful retreat. They scattered, regrouped, and generally ran amok, turning the battlefield into a scene of utter chaos. Their movements were unpredictable, making it nearly impossible for the soldiers to get a clear shot. The soldiers, meanwhile, found themselves outmaneuvered by birds. Their frustration grew as their well-laid plans crumbled in the face of the emus' erratic behavior. Their machine guns, designed for warfare, not wildlife control, were about as effective as water pistols. The emus seemed to mock their efforts, dodging bullets with surprising agility. The emus, it seemed, had won the day. They stood tall and proud as if to say, this is our land and we will not be defeated. Section 6. Lessons Learned. Humility in the Face of Flightless Birds. The Great Emu War was a resounding, if somewhat embarrassing, defeat for the Australian Army. In 1932, soldiers armed with machine guns and military tactics found themselves outmatched by a flock of emus. The emus, with their superior speed, unpredictable movements, and uncanny ability to evade capture, and general lack of respect for military might, turned the battlefield into a chaotic scene. They had proven to be a more formidable enemy than anyone had anticipated. The soldiers' frustration grew as their efforts were thwarted time and again. The lesson? Perhaps it's that even the most well-equipped armies should never underestimate the power of nature, especially when it comes in the form of a large, flightless bird with an attitude. These birds, with their resilience and adaptability, showcased the unpredictable elements of nature that no amount of planning could counter. And maybe, just maybe, some battles are better left unfought, especially against birds. The Great Emu War remains a humbling reminder of nature's unpredictable power.